In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another spontaneous edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I am your soul brother, number one. It is hot, hot, hot. The last week, and I, according to the forecast, next week, or this week, rather, hot, 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 90 and above. <laughs> Woo! In my old age, I can't handle the heat like I used to. Not this type of physical heat. Now the heat that I catch on YouTube, Facebook, and these other places, I can handle that heat. I was made to handle that kind of heat. But this, uh, woo! all over the country. I made a short video out in the sun and uh, you know, getting their vitamin D, they getting power from the sun, like Superman. That would make the news. They said the white man, the sun is not the white man's friend. But when you look at TV, who out there in the sun? Brother Tracy, who is out there in the sun? I see you, Brother Andre, on Angel Snuff Nuff 7 YouTube channel. Brother Andre, who is out, who is in the sun? If the sun is good for the black man, and we absorb and absorb all the, the nutrients or whatever from the sun, where are these black folks? out there in the sun absorbing all this energy. Brother Andre, could you tell tell me? Did, are you have you been out in the sun today? <laughs> These folks are in Central Air. That's where they at. Fake ass. Now when I was growing up, we didn't have a we didn't even have a box fan. We didn't even have electricity. Here's your fan right here. <laughs> when I was growing up, y'all spoiled. We didn't have such an air. We didn't have such a heat. Y'all had spoiled. And we survived.
for generations with no air conditioning, no central heat, none of that. We survived for generations. We didn't even have water in the house. Didn't even have indoor plumbing. And you want to know something? Some people, I'm pretty sure, some people in the South and probably other places are living the same way right now in the United States. The same way. They have no indoor plumbing. They have a well. They're using kerosene. They're using coal or whatever out there in the rural areas. It's still going on right now to this day. But y'all, see, so uh, they, they talk about living off the grid. We've been living off the grid for generations. All this is new. Central air, electricity, and all this, all these comforts. Oh, that's new. That's new stuff. We've been living off the grid for generations, for thousands of years. <laughs> but y'all sport ass, you cannot live without it. You cannot live without it. So, <laughs> Woo! That would make the news. It definitely. I, I'm being told we having technical difficulties on uh, Reality's Tip on Earth Internet Ministry YouTube channel. Okay. I don't see it on my end. I don't know. But we got we got a lot of stuff going on here. So let's try to do this the best we can. If it's not working here. Please switch over to Angel Snuffin' Up 7 YouTube channel. Again, welcome Brother Tracy, Brother Andre, uh, the twins, those out there in the skies. We're going to deal with this and get the hell out of here because I'm telling you, it's, it, 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 the brother getting hot. <laughs> I don't want to mess around here on live live stream. And we have a we have a a, a, a heat stroke. <laughs> now some people wouldn't mind that nigga had a heat stroke. <laughs> They'd be happy to hear that kind of news. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. We gonna get we gonna get into this subject matter, deal with it, and get the hell out of here. Okay, look. See, that's the type of thing. They don't like about Angel Snuff Nuff 7 is we question. Why everybody get to question, but Angel Snuff Nuff 7, I don't get to question. Folks get all mad, upset, all diddly dally when I question. But you get to question. You can question the white man and what the white man do. You can question what Bill Gates do, what Donald Trump is doing. You can what what the elite is doing and what the Illuminati is doing, what uh, P Diddy is, is is doing. You can question uh, T D Jakes and you can question what the Hebrew Israelites is doing. You can question what the Nation of Islam, what Louis Farrakhan is doing. Y'all can question, but when it comes to Angel Number Seven. I don't have the right to question nobody. Why is that? Why I don't get to question folks? Because it's your turn. Because all these folks, you believe there's nothing wrong with you. You think your teaching, you think your beliefs, you think everything about you, you got it going on. You can find fault. You can find error. You can find you can find imperfection in everybody, but you don't see that in yourself. So here come me walking down the street. I don't think you hurt me. I said, here come here come myself walking down the street, walking down the street, and you got and you said, how you doing, brother? I said, I'm fine. Uh, I got some questions for you. I I'd like to know more about what you're doing now. Next thing you know, you're cussing and screaming and hollering. Because 
the, the same type of questions you ask other folks, but you don't want to be asked. You need to watch yourself around folks that don't like questions. I don't mind questions because those questions make me stronger. You can show me my error. You can show me my imperfection and I will try to fix it so I can walk better because I don't know it all. You know it all. That's why you get all upset and screwed up. How is this possible? How could I be wrong? Because that's life. There's nobody perfect. All human beings are capable of error and imperfection. I don't give a damn how long you've done it. You can believe in a lie for thousands of years. So what? It's still a lie. It don't make any difference. And we have discovered that. So what? But you have an arrogance. And you pompous. And you bougie. Nobody can't tell you nothing. And that's why it hurts you so much. Your questions don't hurt me because I can accept my imperfection. I know I don't know it all. I know I cannot understand it all. I know I cannot comprehend it all. So I know I got to fall back. But for me, you got to show that it's logical. That it makes sense. It falls in the parameters of reality. I'm not going to accept your spookism. And your fairy tales and your fantasy. Your beliefs. And that's your problem. You keep trying to paint these beliefs in, as facts. And they're not facts. They're beliefs. I asked a question like this. I was just thinking about this question. I will bring it to the nation of Islam. Or I would, bring, I would bring it to black folks in general because a lot of them, they believe this. That the black man is the original man. The black man is the father of civilization. Many of you believe that. You say that. The original man. But common sense tell you that the original man had to be butt naked. The original man had to be somebody who was a hunter and a matter of fact, you brag about civilization, but civilization was the beginning of humanity become oppressive to itself. It was the beginning of taking your rights your rights away from you because you have the right to water you got to pay a bill you shouldn't have to pay no bill you should be able to go out in the forest and shoot you a deer a possum go out in the forest raspberries grow free in the forest even carrots it's according to where you live you can get free bananas in the forest. You got to pay for bananas. You got to pay for chicken. You got to pay for some eggs. You got to pay for electricity. You got to pay. Well, electricity is not natural anyway. But water, the necessities of life, you shouldn't have to pay for. But with civilization, it took your human rights away. And dominant people began to tell others what you should and should not do under their rule. And so they made civilization manufactured kings and queens. This royalty that turned corrupt and instead of them serving the people, now the people serve them. And you want to brag about it. The only thing good about civilization is the technology. But as far as the human experience, it's a detriment to you. 
I can guarantee you the first human slave was a woman. The female, because they are weaker. You're going to serve me. Matter of fact, even in the old marriage vows, it said that your wife's supposed to serve you. They love that. And she, this female, is oppressed all over the earth, even to this day. She's the number one victim of crime all over the earth. Sex trafficking, rape, prostitution, whatever it is, women, even murder. Next to children. And it's been going on for thousands of years. And a lot of it is justified by these religions, not by God, these religions is made up by men who are anti-woman, put you in your place. And religion is used to justify racism because men want to put other men in their place. I'm the king of the mountain. So I'm the white man I might not be the original man, but I'm the man that kicked you in your ass and put you down below me. I'm the superior one. So you might be the original man, but I'm the supreme. White supremacy. I'm the supreme man. So you can be the original if you want to, Negro. I'm the supreme. I'm the supreme man. Now how you like that? Your original don't mean a damn thing, because I'm supreme. So civilization created all this mess. I wouldn't go around bragging about it. And if you are the original man, you should be butt-ass naked, because that's the way the original people was. I can guarantee you nobody came into this life on this planet wearing no damn clothes. I have yet to see one baby come into this earth wearing clothes. That's man-made. That's a man-made concept. Most primitive people, most original people, don't wear a lot of clothes. They might put a little something over their private parts a little bit. They run around basically butt naked. The civilized people supposed to wear clothes. And who is more who is more uncivilized than those who live in America? You got women walking down the street with no shame, with a piece of string up their backside and a little shorty short, and men ain't no different. You naked, your pants sagging, see your penis, your little penis dragging on the ground, all kinds of stuff. Y'all nasty and disgusting. You have the nerve to talk about somebody civilized. What's civilized about you? Go to any of these clubs or whatever, especially late at night. Oh, they really be getting down. They got the lights all dark. You ought to see the freakishness that goes on. Then you get up and go to church on Sunday. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Fake ass country. <laughs> Y'all holy and righteous. <laughs> Why I cannot question you? So I, I, I bring that question up. Brother, you taking it the, the wrong way or whatever. How am I taking it the wrong way? You should say you are the original civilized man. Because you're not the original man. The original man, I'm... Common sense tell you the original man don't wear no damn clothes. You can say, I'm the original civilized man, not the original man. And the only people on this planet that science determines is probably the most original on the planet are the Twa or the Pygmy people. And the Maasai also is part of the original people. And they still live their original way. <laughs> Woo! You the original man, but you don't live the original way. <laughs> they don't, folks don't.
don't want to hear this kind of stuff. <laughs> I hope it's hot in your apartment, and I hope you burn up. <laughs> we should question those who don't like questions. <laughs> And so we always talking about revolution and they always talk about liberation. But revolution and, re and liberation requires change. And you don't want to change. You like being exactly who and what you are right now. How are you going to ask for a revolution? How are you? That's what liberation and, and liberation is. It's about change. If you're not going to change, you might as well just stay where you at. The only thing you're doing is getting rid of the oppressor, and now you become the oppressor because you have the same State of mind. You think the same way as your oppressor do. There's no difference. But even in your religious teachings, it talks about the change. And you must let go of the former things. Because you're not going to need those things no more. Behold, I make all things new. We talk about that here on this platform all the time, and we're not religious, but we make all things new. What you don't understand, what it is to be new. Because you so obsessed with the old, you can't let go of the past. You so into the past, you can't even see the new. It's like a person who drive a car from 1985, they cannot let go of the 1985, and these new cars scare them. What's all this computerized stuff? I don't need all that. But that's what's happening now. This is not 1985. This is not 1960. This is not 1930. This is not 5000 BC. This is 2024, or or the year 5,000 and something, according to to uh, to to actual. If you really was recording actual time, it's actually almost 6,000 years or a little bit more, or whatever. It's not 2,000 something, but the superior man is in charge, and damn it, he said it's 2024 based upon his fictional character called Jesus. Damn it. I'm the superior. I'm the superior man. I don't give a damn what your original ass want. And so the Japanese go by 2024. And the Indies and everybody around the world go by 2024. Because the superior man is in charge. He kicked the original man ass. You don't like that. That's what has happened. And you are nothing but a chocolate covered version of him. You don't want to hear that either. I don't care all that blackity black, I'm the pan African, whatever. You ain't nothing but him. Because that's all you know. You don't know how to, you don't know what it is to be an original nothing. You ain't never been original. You've been his pet. You've been his slave. You've been his slave more than you have been free. This is a fact. You don't want to be reminded of that. You want to put on this show like you all uh, intelligent because you read some books or whatever. You ain't nothing but a pharaoh ass slave running around the country trying to survive. Like a dog when you kick a dog out your house. Running around the neighborhood trying to Fine. Trying to survive. That's all you are. 
And Lordy, Lordy, if you can live like the white man, even the most pro-blackity black, they so proud when they can live like white folks. I got a brand new TV. Snuck Nub got a TV from 1917. Uh, Snuck Nub drive a car from 1935. You want to beat them. I don't give a damn because you don't produce, you didn't produce no TVs in 1935. You don't produce no TVs now. What the hell are you bragging about? It's their stuff. You bragging about their crap. You ain't produced nothing. I can understand if you say, uh, Angel, uh, you, you using the white man's TV. We make our own TV. This is our TV. You're not doing that. You telling me about something that you got from, uh, what's his name, Tesla, uh, GMC, Ford, or some Japanese brand, Kia, Hyundai. You don't produce a damn thing, original man. You come in here and you brag about what you got. Your diploma didn't come from your school. It came from their school or they support your school. Said the wrong thing, they would take their funding away from Howard. These uh, uh, video by uh, the North Koreans. Talk about how dumb Americans is. The only thing I could say, I couldn't say nothing. Because it's true. Americans are dumb. It's true. All these game shows and foolishness. Some of these people don't even know the capital of the state that they live in. Been living there all their lives. What's the capital? Of, of your state. Uh, uh, Alaska? <laughs> it's Alaska. <laughs> Dumb. You got a public school system that just push dumb children, just, just, just graduate children, can barely read and write. Y'all want to brag. You don't want to change. You got to change. How do you expect a change, but you don't want to change? Most people, when you clean your house, you got to wash your ass. It don't make no sense to wash the windows, clean your floor, floor wash it, get your beds together and all that, but you dirty and stanky. What, that don't make any sense. That means you got to change with the house. The house is clean. You got to be clean. Wash those children. Wash, your, wash the dog scruffy. You got to change so everybody can be in unified. We all clean. Because it don't make no sense that the house is clean and the people inside the house is dirty. I see it all the time. People wear beautiful clothes. And you look, when they open up the car door, they got trash, all kinds of garbage, baby diapers and potato chip bags all in the car. Like, damn, them some nasty folk. But they put on a, they put on this facade like they all clean or whatever. Look at their car, that car is nasty and dirty. You see it all the time. It might, it might be you. <laughs> might be you. This is what they don't like about Angel Snuff Nuff 7 because you live in the past. How you gonna ask for a change and you talking about going back to 1930, 5,000 BC, 100,000 years ago. The past is gone. The past is gone. Hopefully, we are supposed to be better as we go into the future. Your parents live their time, and many of them are gone. But they wanted you to be better. They didn't want you to try to go back into the past and live and be them, because that's impossible. You can't do that. 
when we try to go up back into the past, they making a movie. Or it's for some kind of show. Some kind of party. I'm going to dress up like it's the 1970s. It was a show. What was the name? The, the Wayans Brothers was in it. What was the name of that show? I think it was I'm Going to Get You Sucker. I think that was the name of it. Remember that brother was walking through the street, had goldfish in his platform shoes. This is the 90s or the 80s or the 90s or whatever that movie was made. And he dressed up. What's his name? Antonio Fargas. He used to play uh, Huggy Bear. He was dressed up looking like a pimp from the 1970s. Through, through the neighborhood and people start laughing at him. Like, what the? Look how people laugh at the Hebrew Israelites. They come into the neighborhood, look like goat herders. They're trying to dress up and act like people from the ancient past. They're trying to copy. And people laughing at them. Trying to be something you never was. You never was a Hebrew Israelite in Africa some damn where. You was born in 1995. You never lived the 70s. You don't know nothing about it. Hell, I lived the 70s. I do not want to dress up like it's the 1970s. I don't want to do it. And I actually lived the 1970s. <laughs> I don't want to do it. So they trying to take you into the past. They want to change, but change it back to the past. Whatever that was, it's over and done, y'all. It's done. You can't get it back. Many of us was four years old. Raise your hand if you was four years old. You can't go back and be four years old again. Many of us are not virgins no more. You can't go back and get it. Some of us wish we could when we find out this sex crap ain't, it ain't it's, over, it's overrated. Damn, I wish I had my, my virginity back. I shouldn't have messed with them damn people. They wasn't, they wasn't worthy of me. But it's too late. You can't go back and get your virginity back. Pan-Africanism, blackity black, all this black stuff, they want you to go backwards. They want you to do the moonwalk and go back into a past that we never lived. When we should be moving forward. They don't know how. They don't have any vision. They can't see the new. You will never be able to see the new because your ass stuck in the past. You cannot develop new technology. If civilization was thinking the way y'all do, we still be, hell, we still be walking. Probably wouldn't even have the wheel. Because somebody got to think ahead. Somebody got to think different. That's over. That's something they don't want to hear. They don't like questions. Beware of those who don't like being questioned. And your problem is, you're too arrogant and you're too pompous to say, I don't know. I don't know. I never thought about it that way. Because you think you got it going on. And you really don't. Regurgitating stuff. That's not real. Regurgitating stuff. From people. From 1930. That's all they knew. That's all they could comprehend. There was a lot of people that was actual, that was born actual slaves was still alive in 1930. What do they know? We just came off the slave plantation. 
you have more days as a slave as you do as a free person than a Pan-African. How old is Pan-African? How old is the nation of Islam? It ain't older than being on a slave plantation. Huh? Is it older than being on a slave plantation? And in your current state of mind, 300 years from now, you ain't gonna do no better than the people that was on the slave plantation. That's the shame of it all. Yeah. That's the pathetic shame of it all. Some folks find me arrogant. Can you believe that? <laughs> you think you are you think you are know it all. Can you believe that some folks think that I'm arrogant? There are people who talk a lot of trash and I invite them here, they won't come. They talk a lot of trash. You know how it is, uh, or how it was back in the day with Mike Tyson. There was a lot of people talking trash. What they gonna do to Mike Tyson? until it was time to get in the ring. There's a lot of folks say they smarter than Angel Snup Nup said. More intelligent, more articulate, more more charismatic than Angel Snup Nup would. Anyway, they, they're better. Until they get in the ring. When those guys got in the ring, they talk all that trash. But you saw when they got in the ring with Iron Mike Tyson, they start sweating. You could see their nerves shaking because they knew what they was facing. There's people who do the same thing with me. They run their mouth, talk all this crap. But they won't get in the ring. And if they do get in the ring, they bow down to the most powerful voice on YouTube. You gonna bow down. Because I'm on a higher level than you are. I'm not regurgitating a damn thing. I'm a living man. I'm not following dead folks. I'm not chasing spirits. I'm not getting no superpowers from the universe. God ain't did a damn thing for me. And if you think you better, bring your ass, get in the ring. So we've had some, a few folks to get in the ring. We had the videos. What happened to them? They fall. It's not my fault. They fall. One brother got so upset, you you trying to persecute, you prosecute me. I don't know you. So I'm not trying to persecute you. I'm putting your belief, I'm putting your opinion on trial. That's what's on trial, because I don't know you. I'm putting Hebrew Israelite teachers on trial. I'm putting Pan-Africanism on trial. I'm putting... Nation of Islam on trial. Jesus Christ. I'm putting all these things that we are obsessed with. I'm putting it all on trial. And most of you cannot even represent. You ain't nothing but a puppet and a damn zombie. You don't know what the hell you believe in. I remember when I used to go to church. And I would go to the church, I would go to Sunday school, and I would give the Sunday school teacher problem. <laughs> you know, asking questions, why is this, blah, blah, blah. And so, 
the Sunday school teacher would have to take me to the big boy. That's why I, I was able to make friends with a lot of the preachers. Because the Sunday school teachers, I would usually start in Sunday school, and the Sunday school teacher, I, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get my pastor because, see, because they have a lot of faith in the pastor. They look up to the pastor. He's the man of God. He's the man of, of, of their knowledge. And of course, I have to show the pastor that he's not as smart. He don't know the Bible as, as he thought it would be. But a lot of preacher friends that I made, they, just, they didn't even trip off of it. We got along very well. I got along well with my past. Those were the older pastors. I don't know about these younger guys, but the older pastors used to try to practice peace and love and all that type of thing, and I was able to get along with them because they was trying to practice the love of Jesus Christ. These people run their mouth. They are violent. They are profane. They are hypocrites. You cannot get along with them no matter what they talk about. Now, so I say that because I have the nerve to say, I have the nerve to say, what is it? What you got the nerve to say, man? <laughs> What you got the nerve to say? These folks really get upset because I say, I say, I am better than Jesus. I am better than Elijah Muhammad. I am better than Malcolm X. I am better than Dr. King. And the list goes on and on. Damn it, brother, you done crossed <laughs> Brother, you done crossed the line. Unsubscribe. I'm unsubscribing. You done crossed the line now. You done crossed the line now, bro. You you better than Malcolm X? Oh no, oh no. Unsubscribe. Twin Pyramid, unsubscribe. Brother Tracy unsubscribed. This nigga I'm crazy as hell. He said he better than Malcolm. He better than Marcus Garvey. He better than Harriet. This nigga I'm done gone flipping it. <laughs> I'm going to give you a simple reason why I say that. <laughs> it's as simple as this. Who is more powerful? A dead lion or a live dog? Which one is more powerful? Everybody that we talking about, all these folks that we mentioned, are gone. They have no power. They left certain wisdom behind. They can't go no further. It's the end. The live dog keeps making puppies. The dead lion makes nothing except stench. That's what the dead lion does. I don't care how powerful the lion was. Nobody care what the lion did. But now the lion is dead. The only thing the lion is good for now is for the maggots. The dung beetles or whatever. The living dog continues to make puppies. The living dog continues to live. 
the damn lion will stay forever where it dropped. I am beyond Malcolm. I'm beyond Marcus Garvey. I'm beyond Noah Jolly. I'm beyond all. I'm beyond these, the Quran and the Bible. I'm beyond because these are things from the dead. And I'm alive and I express myself as the living. And as I'm living, I can change. I can change my forms. I can move from the left. I can move from the right. My comprehension skills is there. I can see. I can dance. I continue to move forward. But when you're dead, I don't care how powerful or how smart you think you was. Albert Einstein was one of the smartest men on the planet. It's over. His information stopped when he died. Maybe the progress trying to follow, follow dead folks. The living following the dead. Yeah, yeah, I'll say, I say that I'm greater. Bring your representatives that represent the dead. Y'all come here with your dead ass knowledge. Bring it here and see how long it stands. Because I already know what you're going to talk about. I already know how you are because you digging. You're a grave digger. You're a grave robber. You love your grandparents. But you don't go to their grave to get any knowledge from them. Because they're gone. You go to your parents who are living. Where their parents supposed to have passed down some wisdom to them. But the, but the parents supposed to add on to what grandma and grandpa done. They don't do and don't live the way our ancestors did in 1900. 1900, there was no radio. There was no cell phone. There was no computer. And you don't even want to live that way. You don't want to live that way. They don't even teach these children cursive writing anymore. Things change and we got to change. But we don't want to change. We want to stay the same way that we are. But what we are is what's keeping us in the grave. I challenge all these Zombies. Yeah, I'm better. Because I'm alive. They're gone. It don't make no difference how powerful or how smart you think they was. How is it helping you? If it was helping you, you would have an argument. You're not, you're not even able to replicate. I'm going to do, do a Dr. Umar Johnson. You're not even able to replicate. You're not even able to replicate what they done in 1930. That goes to show how pitiful your happy ass is. You can't even replicate what slaves did off the slave plantation. That show you how pitiful you are. Mr. Original man. <laughs> you ain't better than Elijah Muhammad. I'm not better than Elijah Muhammad. I'm not better than Pat, uh, Marcus Garvey. I'm not better than whoever. Bring them here. I will come to you. Some of these people talk about you wouldn't say that to Minister Firecon. And they pretend like they're going to. Minister Firecon don't give a damn about you. You can write a letter and tell him it's this guy. Think he's smarter than you, Minister Firecon. Could you please uh, 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 
give him two or three minutes and show him uh, that, that he ain't all that, he's not going to respond. Tariq Nasheed is not going to respond. Sanetta is not going to respond. What's his name? Uh, the other, the, the, the Moorish guy. What's his name? I forgot what his damn name is. The Moorish Temple guy. None of these people are going to respond. They know what they're coming up against. Even my old suckers. Bring your happy ass here. Then you want to try to show off. You think, you for some reason, you think that you, you, you've gotten something. You don't want none of this. Because I'm the new. You the old. You represent the dead. In the nation of Islam, we used to teach, because you are alive, that a fruit of Islam, you have to be fast moving, quick thinking, all right down to the modern, right down to the modern time. Not right down to 1930, 5,000 years ago. Right down to the modern times today. I'm confident because I'm alive. Dealing with dead folks. Trying to live in a, a past that you never lived. The only thing they can do is get upset. The only thing they can do is unsubscribe. That's all you can do. Dead ass. I want to be humiliated. If I'm wrong, I want to be shut down. I want to be humiliated. I want to be shut down. I want to be embarrassed. I want that. I want to. I Look, I'm going to say this and we're going to go get into our main topic and get the hell out of here. I used to play basketball pretty good until I got old and fat. I mean, I, I was whooping up on some folks. I was whooping up on folks so bad, I start cheering against myself. I got tired of me winning all the time. So I want you. I want to be beaten. I want you to shut my mouth. I want you to humiliate me. Hey, 226. J226. I want to be humiliated. I want somebody, I want somebody to break me down. You're not going to be able to do nothing with me in your current situation. If anybody is able to, to do that, it's because they're, going, they're on a higher level, on a, a newer level than I am. But I know dead folk ain't going to do a damn thing with me. I already know dead folks ain't going to do, a, do nothing with me. And see, a lot of folks... Don't like Angel Snuff Nuff 7, but I can guarantee you, if you was in a court of law, you would be happy to have me on your side. Because in a court of law, they only deal with facts. They only deal with logic. They don't care about your belief. They don't care about what you assume. They don't care about speculation. In the court of law, they, they, they deal with your, your factual evidence. The majority of the time, of course, that's what they're supposed to deal with. But we, we who have actually dealt with the system, we know how that go. But that's the premise. So I welcome, and I, I want even the folks from the past. If you think you got it going on like that, I want you to come and humiliate. I want you to embarrass. I want you to destroy my information. Talking about my old computer, talking about my shirt, talking about my bald head, 
That is not destroying my information. Destroy the ideology of the reality's temple on earth. Every time they attack Angel Slum Number Seven, they attack. They try to attack me as a person. You never hear them try to attack the reality's temple on earth. They never do. They never attack my information. And none of them have challenged Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. The only thing they say is, when y'all going to Mississippi, the same old dumb stuff. When y'all going to Mississippi. Same old dumb ass stuff. Which we never said that. That's a distraction tactic. How are you going to argue? How are you going to debate with somebody that you don't even know? You don't know nothing about. You don't know where I'm coming from. See, I can debate you because I have a basic knowledge if I don't know all this stuff y'all talking about. But you don't really know me. And you don't even comprehend reality. So how can some sucker caught up in spookism and some ideology from 1930, what you gonna do with me? You can't do a damn thing with me. So I can say that. If you don't think I'm, I'm a better or more intelligent than dead folks, you become their representative and you show me your dead man is smarter and better than me. Our brother Denzel in the house. <clears throat> See, so it's leading to the conversation about reparations. And I say, the smartest way to achieve that goal is within the confines of Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. That's the only way you're going to be able to accomplish that goal. All the other things that you have been trying don't work. They've been, we, some of our people have been trying to get reparations since the fall of slavery. Since the end of slavery. These people have not gave you one penny. There are certain cities and towns across this nation they have taken upon themselves to try to do a little something something for reparations. But really see, that's not their responsibility. It's the responsibility of the United States government. It's the responsibility of the United States government because they allowed this. They benefited. They made the laws. They benefited from this. It's their responsibility. It's not a small town in Chicago or some, or, or, or I heard LA want to do something. It is, it's not, this is federal responsibility. And they ain't listening to you. They haven't gave you one penny and you've been asking for reparations a hundred years. Asking there's nothing wrong with asking for reparation. But when you can see clearly 
that they're not going to give you nothing, then your asking turns into begging. Because they told you, I'm not going to give you nothing. And begging, it becomes embarrassing. Why the original man who built the universe and did all the stuff that y'all claim, but you can't get reparations, Mr. Original Man? Tariq Nasheed is so smart, you ain't going to get a dime. Dr. Umar Johnson is so smart, Louis Farrakhan, all these smart ass folks, you ain't get a dime in reparation. How many conferences y'all done had? Let's have a reparation conference. Every week y'all have a, a conference on reparation. Wasting money, wasting time. You ain't gonna never get it. <laughs> like Invo said. You're never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never get it, you're never gonna get it. You have to be smart. You don't have a military. It's like a small guy dealing with somebody with big muscles and if you're a small guy, you're gonna have to think differently. Because this guy is more powerful than you. He's taller than you. He's bigger. He's stronger. Brain over brawn. These people, they look smart or they act smart, but they're nothing but brawn. Why do you think they need all these nuclear weapons? Because they're not smart. So they got to have all these weapons and, and tanks and things because they're not smart they have no brains you have to use your brain you have to be smart you have to it's like martial this don't make any sense it's like martial arts in martial arts they teach you when you're facing a, a strong opponent I don't care how strong, how big a person is. Everybody has weak points. Strike the eyes, the throat, the ears. There's other places, the solar plex, kneecaps. It's different parts of the body, nerve centers that you can hit. And they're going to go down. You don't think that way. You got to look, okay? Look at America. What is their weak point? I've ne out of all these teachings, you never hear them teach what is the weak point? What is it that we can hit? And they'll go down. You never hear them talk like that. They talk like they big and bad and God gonna... Do this, they talk like you you talk and act like you have nuclear weapons and AK 47s and, and, and all that. You don't. These folks live in fantasy world. Actually, they just they talk all this to sell you so they can make money off your ass. Cause you're not getting reparations, but you giving them all your money and ain't getting a damn thing in return. You're not going to get reparations begging these people. You got to be smart enough to take what you want, whether they like it or not. And that's what Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign is. That's what it's about. Using their law, using the tools that they give you to get what you want. And there's nothing they can do about it unless they go against themselves and whatever they do look let me tell you something about real scammers these real scammers they know how to look at the law and find ways around stuff 
and it's legal. I heard Donald Trump, some of his people, they was talking about, you know, that's what rich folks do. What they call it? The loophole. Find the loopholes and see the Black Panthers was on the right, they were on the right road, but they got caught up in all this, get a gun, I'm gonna shoot somebody. You, you can, you're not in no position to, to, to do nothing like that. Let's get all these guns. They used, they used all that to destroy them. But Huey P. Newton, those brothers found the loophole so they didn't carry their weapons. There was nothing they could do about it. That's where they needed to concentrate. Find the next loophole. But no, you fell into these people's trap. You fell into this trap. I got to be tough. How are you going to be tough with lint in your pocket? That's what it's about. Find the weak point. Us. Perfect example. And some of you brothers are guilty. I'm guilty. You know, women, women use their womenness <laughs> to get over on men. She might have a thousand dollars in her pocketbook. I don't think she got to do is show a little breast, show a little booty. Uh, could you, sir? Could you get that? Your mind all on her booty and all on her on her breasts and. Sure, baby, I, I helped you out. <laughs> she probably got a thousand dollars in her pocket. She don't need your help. But she knows that some of you, your, your weakness. Even little, woo, <laughs> even little children. Some of the little children know they cute or whatever. They use their little cuteness. Can I? Can I get that toy? And they know how to smile. They know how to move their little eyes. You say, oh, okay. They ain't supposed to have it. But you you mess around and fall. And you, you're weak over this, this child. Uh, look. Even dogs do it. Dog put his paw on, on your leg. Rub up against you. Can I have her? Can I have another biscuit? You know the dog want another biscuit. Well, you ain't supposed to have a biscuit, but the dog know your weakness. Everything has a weakness, y'all. And that's all we gotta do is concentrate on these people. I don't care how strong you are. A lion has a weakness. An elephant has a weakness. I don't. The, the biggest building. When they blow up buildings. They put those explosives in certain parts of the building, the weak points, to bring that whole big old building down. Now, if I'm talking crazy, y'all, please put in the chat room uh, so I can shut the hell up if, I, if I'm talking some crazy stuff. I feel as though it's not crazy. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just breaking it down real. Now, just because you don't know the weak points, just because you don't know how, don't make me crazy. The reason why I'm talking to you and I'm not locked up in the crazy house because I found the weak points. I found the weak points in myself because I had to get up out of that crazy pro-blackity-black thinking. Stupid. And I had to find the weaknesses in my opponents. It's like when you're playing chess. And your opponent makes one move. And see, when you're playing chess or checkers, you got to think about, okay, if I make, if I go over here, what they going to do? So you got to think ahead, okay? If I, if I do this, what is going to be his response? What is going to be her response? Come on, y'all. Are, are we this... Are we this dippity? <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> we can't see this? Because, see, I love to win. I don't know about y'all. I love to win. See, I'm like Michael Jordan. I'm like Bruce Lee. 
I'm like Kobe Bryant. Th these people love to win. Michael Jackson loved to win. Y'all losers. You don't want to win. You want to pretend to win. You want to pretend to win. <laughs> I don't like that. I, I want to win. When I win, look, when I used to play basketball, I, I won so much, even when I lost, people were still mad. It's just like a, when we was going against the, the, uh, the demons of darkness. You can't even tell if I if I ever did lose. We was winning so much, and even if we did lose or whatever, you couldn't tell. <laughs> that's that's the that's the attitude. That's why I said we win even when we lose. You can't never tell when we lose. We win so much. You have to have that Michael Jordan spirit, that Kobe Bryant spirit, that Bruce Lee spirit. I got to win. That's all it's about. I might not win, but I'm going to play to win. Even the people that win feel like they, they lost when they play because they, they know they, know they could have lost. And they know they was in a battle. I'm very sure there are people who beat Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, but when it's all said and done, I mean, they win so much. Like, damn, man, okay. You can't even really, you know, you can't really enjoy your win because they win so much. And that's the way that we, we want to be. The ball is out in our court. Our ancestors are dead. All these ones they talking about. They cannot help you. Malcolm cannot talk to us. Marcus Garvey cannot talk to us. Elijah Muhammad cannot talk to us. And their knowledge is limited to 1965, 1930, 40, whatever. That's where it stops. And it didn't work for them. They didn't, they couldn't change nothing. They made a little progress, but we still here in the cesspool. We want to change this once and for all. But see, as you know, some of these people actually benefit from the condition. So if the condition actually changed, what they going to do? They need us to stay. This is what you got to understand. They need us to stay in this condition for them to exist. Because if the condition really changes, what they going to do? What is Sonetta TV going to do? What is more science going to do? What is Tariq going to do? What, are, what is the Nation of Islam going to do? If the condition actually changed, and it did not change because of them, it's over. If you listen to Angel Snuffin' Up 7, and you become successful because of Angel Snuffin' Up 7, that's the end of them. That's the end of the church. That's the end of the nation of Islam. That's the end of the Moor Science Temple, the Hebrew Israelite, the Pan-African. All the black people, it's the end of it. And it should be the end. Because you're more than blackity black. Caught up in this racist net, this spider web. You are a human being. You're more than skin color. And we always talking this black stuff. It's people way blacker, way more melanated than we are. They don't talk that melanated bull crap. Pull some videos with people that's really, really 
What's her name? Our sister Rashida Stroller. She's the dark skinned activist. It's people way darker than she is. She, matter of fact, she's not black. Rashida, even myself, we are dark brown. I seen people really, really black. I mean, really dark. The pupils of their eyes, even the white in their eyes is almost dark. They don't talk, oh, the melanin in my skin, and they don't talk that melanin garbage. We the only ones caught up and make a religion out of anything. We make a we make a religion out of Skippy peanut butter. Oh man, brother, you can get Skippy peanut butter, and the nutrients will go through your skin, make your brain sharp, all kinds of. We make up all kinds of stuff. You can be a vegan, and 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 and, and all these you get all these powers and whatever, and all of them get sick. All of them still going to the grave like anybody else. There's always exceptions to the rule. And then you use the exception to the rule as an example. Everybody else in the hospital, everybody else going to the grave. I saw a vegan drinking some avocado juice or whatever. Next thing you know, they're in the hospital talking about getting the operation for their, for their back. Probably because you're not getting enough protein in your diet or whatever. We make a religion out of anything. Let me say this and get out of here. You want to keep following dead folks? And you want to keep following these scammers? Be my guest. That's on you. Because I'm not a savior. I'm not a messiah. I'm not no divine anything. God don't do nothing for me. I'm just a brother that have learned how to use my brain. Well, God gave you a brain. Well, God gave you your brain. How come you're not using it? I can't tell you have a brain. Because everything coming out your mouth, the Arab Elijah Muhammad say, uh, Nova Juali say, Malcolm X say, Dr. King say, like, damn. You don't have no brain of your own. And out of all this talk about reparations, why don't they talk about Jim Crow? How can you talk about Jim Reparations, and you never mentioned Jim Crow. Jim Crow was over a hundred years. And this also includes the black codes. They were taking brothers and sisters, putting them in jail, and putting them basically on these, uh, in these situations where they was building railroads and other stuff under the table. Charge them with these bull doo doo crimes so they can justify putting you on the a chain gang some damn where. And that went all over the South, of course. Probably all over the country. The South always get blamed for such and such, but we begin to find out and learn that the South, I mean the North, the East, or whatever, a lot of them was guilty of a lot of things also, not just the South. This nation, of course it was, the focus is on the South, this nation is guilty of an atrocity against us and our people. This country, North, East, West, whatever. Because all of them benefited from the evil. How you gonna how are you gonna talk about reparations and don't talk about Jim Crow? And many of us who were part of Jim Crow, we are alive. 
So you don't even have to make that argument. These suckers always talking that crap. You never was no slave. There's a lot of us alive right now, our parents still alive, that suffered Jim Crow. Now what you gonna say? Let's add Jim Crow. My parents and my grandparents was making two dollars a day. If they was lucky, maybe three. A day. They worked from sun up to sundown. Jim Crow, aka another form of slavery. How are you gonna just not say nothing about Jim Crow? You can make a case on reparations and don't even have to talk about slavery no more. We can talk about Jim Crow and let's see them squirm out of that. There's many of us. I was born in Jim Crow. Our parents share croppers. I just met, I just talked to one of my uh, sister's friends. Talking about how they was making a dollar a day. Dollar, one dollar all day in Arkansas. Jim Crow, a.k.a. slavery. Let's talk about the Freedmen's Bank. When the slaves get free, take your money. Let's put it in the bank for you. And they stole it. Our people never got their money back. The government is allowing all these, all these scammers, all this stuff to happen to us. They took the soldiers out of the South and let these people terrorize us. We don't even have to talk about slavery. We can talk about Jim Crow. The last 100 years, they cannot squirm out of that. a day. When I first began to work, I think the minimum wage was two, 225 or something like that. So I'm making, my mother was making $2 a day. When I get my first job, I'm making about $2 an hour. Our people, because they was robbed. You talk about generational wealth. They worked from sun up to sundown. Couldn't leave their children nothing because they had nothing. They died broke. If you work from sun up to sundown like that, you should be able to leave your children. The next generation is a little something. They couldn't leave us nothing. How are you going to mention reparations and don't mention Jim Crow? And I can tell you about that. There's a lot of us that can tell you about that. That's alive. We lived it. They still alive. They can't squirm out of it. They can't say, you never was, this is their, one of their favorite arguments. Duh, duh, you never was a slave. Duh, 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 duh. They can't squirm out of Jim Crow. It's millions of us that was part of Jim Crow, still alive right now to this day. Those who really suffered and their children. I was born in Jim Crow. Squirm out of it. But see, this is the thing. You're dealing with evil people. Because reparations shouldn't even be a problem. But you're dealing with evil people. Dishonest folks. Hateful folks. They hate you. And you, we ain't did a damn thing to them. Like when we was dealing with the demons of darkness. They hate me. I ain't never did a damn thing to these people. 
And then they brag about what they got from me. Just evil, wicked, nasty folks. That's what we're dealing with. See, they know if you go to court, you got to prove everything. They know that slavery, our records of slavery is all messed up. Why are you paying their, their relatives money? They wasn't in the car accident. The relatives died. That's the same stupid logic. You wasn't in 9-11. Your uncle or your or mother or somebody, they died in 9-11. What you getting money for? But they're going to come to us with that logic. Reparations is for those who are actually living and suffering and their descendants if the, if the actual people aren't alive. We are their descendants. How, how we know your people were slaves? They know. See, they they play in this sick ass game. And if any of you have ever been in a car accident or something like that, blah blah blah, and you trying to get paid or whatever, the, these attorneys they do they do the same thing. They make up these arguments. But see, these suckers know that time has destroyed a lot of records and they didn't, slaves was property. That's just like trying to go back and look up the records of, 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 of a dog going back 100 years. These cows and chickens, they was property. You know how you gonna go back 100 years? They ain't keep up no records like that. It's a sick ass game. And so what we have to learn how to do is learn how to play their sick ass game better than them. And you begin by finding their weak spot. And that's what Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign is all about. People trip on the name. I ain't going to Mississippi. Stupid. It's about gaining your liberation. It's about creating a brand new world. A brand new reality. The change. You can't conceive it. You have no vision. Because they got you stuck in the past. Because you're, you still have the same mind as your oppressor. You're not going to beat him trying to beat him. The only thing you can do with his mind is help him. That's why you have not progressed. You ain't been able to achieve nothing. And even I saw a video uh, with that brother, what's his name? Charleston White, whatever his name, Charles White. I saw a video with him talking. What have we done in the last 50 years that our ancestors would be proud? Absolutely Nothing except talk, debates, conferences. That's all. Embarrassing. But you smarter than me. But you're doing it your way and you're accomplishing nothing. And I even help do it that way. So I help 
But you won't help because you're too damn proud. You're too proud to, to say and admit, I, I don't, I don't, no, I don't know. Let's try it this way. Let's see. You only hurt yourself. You only hurt yourself. So on that note, I got that rant off. And again, I want to be humiliated. The tape to figure out what did we do wrong. Y'all act like you don't play chess. You act like you never you never took martial arts. You know y'all like you never played basketball. Like damn, strategy people. You act like you don't know how to box. It's all about the strategy. When you lose, you go back and look at the replay. History is the replay, and you look at the history. What did we do wrong? Why are they beating me? Then you figure out why they beating me. What can I do to counter what they done so I can win? Come on. You actually going to get angry at Angel Snub Number 7 because I want to win? <laughs> All right. I appreciate your joining us this uh, this evening. I just had this rant. It's hot as a, it's hotter than a mug, but I had this rant. I just wanted to get this off my chest. I thank you so much, and I I know I'm an intimidating type person, but I will accept correction. Because correction makes me better. Because I will work on that which is an error so I can be stronger. Because I have no belief. I have no narrative to sell. See, that's their problem. They have something they're trying to sell, a narrative. The teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the teachers of Noble Drew Ali, uh, the, the, the black Hebrew Israelite, whatever, the Moore Science Temple, blah, blah, blah. See, they trying to sell something. I don't have a narrative to sell. See, if you accept certain things to be wrong, that's going to destroy these people's narrative. So they cannot accept it because... If I accept this, Elijah Muhammad was wrong. Jesus was wrong. Yahweh was wrong. Tariq Nasheed was wrong. Sanada wrong. That's the problem. What's that song? Loving you is wrong. I don't want to be right. <laughs> so you rather stay in the condition that you're in because you cannot, because you don't want to shame Elijah Muhammad. Well, I mean, it's happening anyway. It don't make no difference. It's happening anyway. More and more people, whether you like it or not, more and more people getting sick of all this black evil because it's not going nowhere. It's not making no progress. It's not producing any fruit. You can be loyal to a lie to the day you die, and many people have done that. You can do that. But don't sit around here talking about how you love your children. Or you don't give a damn about the future. All that you care about is your loyalty to Elijah Muhammad or Malcolm or some other dead ass folks 
or or uh, some god from from a foreign land. Here we are. We live in America, and all your gods came from overseas. All of them. God never brought his happy ass to America and talked to you. We always got to talk to some middle man. I don't want to talk. If I, believe, if I believe in God, I don't want to talk to no middle man. You talk. I want to talk directly to God like the middle man did. I want God to come to me like God came to those people in Africa or wherever the hell God's supposed to come from. You come to America. You come to the hood, God. Come to Harlem. Come to East St. Louis. Come to Compton, God. And you talk to us. No more middleman. But God not going to come to us because God never came to them. It's a lie. It's lies. Shout out to our brother, um, brother 47. Brother 47 sent me a video. A thousand people died from heat stroke. Trying to go to Hodge, trying to go to Mecca, something like that. A thousand. On the video, they showed the, the people. Carrying them out in ambulances and things and that. Where, where, where is the lie at? Got all these people in the hot ass sun. They falling out, dying. And their excuse is, well, Allah called them home. <laughs> that's, that's, what they, that's the excuse they always use. Allah call, called them home. No, your ass should have been in the air conditioning. You shouldn't have been out there with all them damn hot ass clothes on in the middle of the desert to about Allah, then your ass wouldn't have been dead from a heat stroke. Allah ain't called you nowhere. That's common sense. They tell you if you're going to work outside in the heat, you got to prepare yourself. There are some people, I do what I want to do. And you see them go to the morgue from heat stroke. If it's cold outside, you have to dress properly in order to deal with the weather. Otherwise, you will have to deal with a, a hypothermia. What they call that when your fingers all freeze up? I forgot what they call that. And your fingers can actually fall off. What did frostbite? God don't have to do nothing with that. Common sense. Y'all God stupid. Powerless. You, you made an idiot out of you. You don't even have common sense. That's on that's on us. That's on you. You want to keep doing what you're doing? So be it. And the ultimate conclusion is going to be your extinction. And your dumb ass need to be extinct. And probably the roaches would develop into the next super intelligent creature on the planet. <laughs> Who knows how many other intelligent life been on earth before us. And their dumb ass went extinct. Doing the same dumb stuff. It's a lot of civilizations that have have been not a lot of civilizations have been destroyed not because of war, because the people was idiots. The, the the leaders was idiots. They smart, but they 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 they. They get to the point where you become arrogant. Don't have to worry about you no more. The, the earth doesn't give a damn 
damn about you. The universe don't give a damn about you. We are, we're nothing as far as the universe is concerned. If we are here, that's cool. If we're not here, the universe keeps rolling. Ants don't care nothing about you. Grasshoppers don't care nothing about you. Lions don't give a damn about you. If you decide, if you don't want to care nothing about you, then so be it. The original man. See, that's what gets me. You call yourself the original man. You so smart. You so intelligent. Look at your condition. It's like a person talking about, I'm going to say this, get out of here. It's like a person bragging about how smart they are, and when you look at their report card, ain't nothing but D, E's, and F's. But they, they sound smart. They sound into, I'm the original man, the Asiatic black man. What you got? You late for the white man's job. The original man. These people, I'm going to say this and get out of here. Because <laughs> I was just thinking about this. Louis Farrakhan been doing this for 40 years. For oh, over 40 years. The Nation of Islam, one of their staples is the Navy Bean, right? If the Navy Bean is your staple, after 40 years, shouldn't they have Navy Bean farms? I'm not talking about no farm. I'm talking about the Navy Bean is your staple. You should, they should have factory for Navy Beans. This man has thousands of followers. It's enough followers to support a Navy Bean factory so they can feed themselves Navy Beans. They can can their own Navy This man, there's no Navy Bean factory. Navy beans is a staple in the Nation of Islam diet. The staple in Japan and I believe China is rice. If they don't do nothing else, you gonna get some rice. Because it's a staple. The foundation of their diet the foundation of the Nation of Islam diet is Navy beans. These people don't even have one Navy bean factory. Following the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Here I am. There's no way I could be leader of the Nation of Islam with thousands of followers. My number one priority, I have to, I have to produce our staple. Our staple is navy beans. They don't have none. I was talking to one of my relatives who follow Minister Farrakhan and we were just talking and they were talking about getting their navy beans and it wasn't from nothing the nation of Islam was producing. I didn't even say nothing. I just let them talk. They was getting their Navy beans from, from whatever. Because if it was getting from them, they would have said, I, I need to order some more Navy beans from our factory, our, from our farm or whatever. They, they never. I was waiting for them to say that. We can our, we can our own Navy beans. They never did say, I didn't say nothing. I just let them talk. They want to tell me how great Minister Farrakhan is or whatever. And you can't even, this man cannot even produce a can of Navy beans for you. And you're going to tell me I'm not better? I can guarantee you, at minimum, I'll be able to give you a can of damn Navy beans. <laughs> our own Navy beans. If that's our staple, come on. 
but something wrong with me. I'm saying stuff that I'm saying things that's wrong. Angel Snuff, something wrong with Angel Snuffing Up Seven. Because I demand or I hold accountable these leaders. You don't hold nobody accountable. You love that they give you nothing. And that's exactly what you get. Nothing. Oh, brother Talib. Brother Talib says the sun in Mecca, Arabia <laughs> didn't care about them over a thousand Muslims that died on the Hajj the pilgrim, pilgrim, uh, on the Hajj pilgrim, pilgr pilgrimage <laughs> under heat under heat in the land of Master Farah Muhammad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh well. We want to keep living this stuff. Oh well, what can I say? I would hope that you would encourage and inspire others and you would share this video and other videos from the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry and all everything else that you hear is cartoon and foolishness. And they can come here anytime and we will show them that's what it is. Only adults can come here. That's why you're called a child of God. Because you're a child. <laughs> Talib said, where was the melanin protection for those darker skinned Muslims? <laughs> We said earlier in the conversation, uh, Brother Talib, where all these guys talk about how wonderful the sun is for melanated people. We don't see, I haven't seen no video of them out in the sun enjoying that 100, uh, 116 degree uh, index, whatever they call that. Uh, I don't see none of them out there enjoying the sun or, or bragging about, I was in the sun today, uh, blah, blah, blah. That that will burn you up. I don't give a damn how uh, melanated you are. That sun will cook you. Go out there and do that foolishness. That's why they're not out there. The only life that can deal with direct sunlight are trees, plants, because they can't move, whatever. All life find some shade, get the hell out of the sun. I don't see none of these niggas out in the sun. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they get angry when you call, call them out on it. With that said, let me get out of here. We talked enough. I stand corrected. I could be wrong. Everything I said, I could be, I could be wrong. I don't mind being wrong. Come here and correct us. But you're not gonna bring that foolishness here. All that, all that stuff you talk about, that's good for DVD tapes and whatever. That's not good in real life. When you come here, you're dealing with real life. This is not the mosque. This is not the temple. This is not the synagogue. This is not one of Dr. Umar Johnson's lectures. This is the reality step on earth. This is real life. Talib says, this proves no race or ethnic group or any other species is protected from global warming. Peace to myself. And Talib says, peace out to all the chat. And I want to apologize for any technical difficulties. I know we was having uh, technical difficulties. I can't see. I can't see it on my end. Uh, I can't see it on my end. But 
I apologize for those technical difficulties. It's probably because of the the heat. The heat might be messing with the uh, internet transmission. Who knows? So. I thank you so much. I thank you so much for joining us this uh, this evening. Brother Talib, Brother Denzel, the Deacons of Reality, Brother J226. I see somebody new. Uh, and the answer is or whatever. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, rather, this evening, rather. I appreciate it. Subscribe. Please share. And you can even make your own Angel Snub Number 7 channel. Make your own Angel Snub Number channel. Put the videos on there. Spread the word. Support our vision of Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. And if you don't know what that is, one of my best videos is, and you can look it up, Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign for dummies. And I, I, can't, I can't break it down no, <laughs> no more simpler than that. Mississippi campaign for dummies. Check that video out. We are simulcasting on Facebook. Shout out to Freddie Scott on, on our Facebook channel. I much appreciate Freddie Scott. Always there on Facebook. Shout out to Freddie, Freddie Scott and his family. Again, we are simulcasting on Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Um, Facebook. We are Simon Casting on Angel Snuffing Up 7 YouTube. And of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry YouTube channel. Two YouTube channels and our Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us this, uh, this evening. <laughs> we got a new person said Operation Exodus is growing worldwide, y'all. <laughs> I, I hope so. I, I would really like to get this. Before I go to my grave, I would surely like to see um, the vision and operation. I'm very confident. I'm very confident. We will get everything that we want because that's the wisest that's the wisest thing to do. You might have to change a little bit, move a little bit, but the foundation is strong, it'll work. It'll get the job done. I want to be a winner. You should be want to be a winner too. So on that note, let's get out of here. Like our ancestor Don Cornelius used to always say as in party, we wish you love, peace, and so we are Audi 5000.